Hi, I'm Nancy Bell, and I'm very excited to talk to you today about the importance of a learning ability evaluation. When you have questions about learning performance, one of the most important things you can find out is whether or not your child or you yourself have any difficulty with processing language. Especially, it's important to know your strengths and your weaknesses. So, I'm going to write down some things here that I want you to be thinking about. The first one is what you will learn from uh, a learning ability evaluation is why. And this is why you want to do it. Uh, you have everyone, all of us, have strengths and weaknesses. Let me just write that down for you. In a four-hour learning ability evaluation, you get to find out what things are easy and what things aren't easy. And maybe everything is going to be easy. But if you have the evaluation, with standardized tests, it takes a little less than four hours, sometimes longer. You can find out if you or your, let's just say it's your child, has strength in oral vocabulary or weakness in oral vocabulary. Strength in following directions or weakness in following directions. And that learning profile will help you answer why there may be certain things happening to your son or your daughter at school. For example, for years and years, I had <clears throat> people call uh, and ask me questions about what we did. And they always, before they got into too much content from me, they always wanted to tell me what was happening for their son or their daughter. For example, it could be that uh, their son was having difficulty learning to read. Their daughter had been diagnosed as dyslexic. Uh, their uh, daughter had been diagnosed on the spectrum in some way. Uh, or even just not able to learn to read to what they thought was their child's potential. Or maybe falling uh, behind in fourth grade or sixth grade when they were doing pretty well in first grade. And so I always said the same thing. Before you get further on in telling me what's happening with your child, I want to tell you what we do to find out why that may be happening. I don't want to pick up on what you're telling me. I want to tell you what I know you need to do. And that's what I want to do right now in this video. When, when you think of a, a child learning to read or a child that may have been diagnosed with dyslexia, or an adult that is struggling uh, to read or spell. We tend to think that, oh, it could be a, a, a many different, there could be many different causes. But the fact is, there's, o there are only a few causes. And, and the cause is generally, there's generally one primary cause, and that is some weakness in the sensory system. We call it weak sensory cognitive processing. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we go on. But I want you to know this as you're looking at the rest of uh, this, maybe the next 10 minutes. I want you to know that everything that we learn, everything that we're doing with cognition stems from something in the sensory system. And so these three sensory cognitive functions are phoneme awareness, and you know, I'm sure you've probably heard of that, being able to process sounds and words, and symbol imagery and concept imagery. And I'm going to talk a lot about the imagery relationship to processing uh, language. So if, we're, if you're back looking at um, what I've written down for you, strengths and weaknesses, I'm going to put SC for sensory cognitive functions, and that's phonological awareness, symbol imagery, and concept imagery. But I also want to talk to you about something that I think is a little bit different, and that is you want to identify the strengths and weaknesses that your child has because you want those weaknesses to become strengths. 
we do not believe in teaching to a strength. Instead, what we want to do is find out what things are, what are peaks and what are valleys, and change those valleys so that they become peaks. And then that child is able to learn to read and spell and do math to their potential. This is also important. I'm going to go to another slide, and I'd like for you to uh, look at what I'm going to show you here in terms of if this is kindergarten and this is 12th grade, one of the things that a learning ability evaluation will let you know is why that student or your child may be falling behind here and can an that can answer what the weaknesses are, uh, may be that are contributing to that. But it, let's just say that your child has no weaknesses, that you do a learning, you have a learning ability evaluation and something starts to happen where your child is performing below the, his or her grade level or his or her potential. You want to know that so that you can take action to make whatever correction you need to make that's not related to learning. So I'm hoping that by the time you and I are through talking together that you'll see that whether or not someone has told you that your child has a weakness in, in learning or is struggling in learning, whether or not that's the case, a learning ability evaluation is going to be extremely important. So you can find out strengths and weaknesses and also it helps you know the cause of any issues that are happening in school. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's, let's start by thinking that uh, we're primarily concerned, let me take you back for a second, one of the reasons that, one of the primary reasons students don't do well in school has something to do with reading words or comprehending language, usually if that's the case. Um, and that takes us to the reading circles so I can help you understand the component parts of reading. For example, um, when I did this many years ago, there's for me, there's three circles. And it's auditory, so let me go back to that one, which is the ability to sound out words, and that is related to phoneme awareness and symbol imagery. It's also the ability to recognize words, that you don't have to sound out every word. You don't want your child having to sound out every word and not recognizing a lot of words. And it's also being able to read fluently in context. And those, those three circles, I call them the subsets of a greater circle of comprehension, which I'll get to in a minute. But, so let me take you to the reading circles in the middle here, and then decoding for symbol imagery and uh, comprehension for concept imagery. I think that you have that now. These circles would be related to symbol imagery. This big circle would be related to concept imagery. If we, when, when we see students that come to us with a prior diagnosis, you can think of weak decoding can be so severe that it falls into the category of dyslexia. And again, as, as I had mentioned before, we have um, very recent and very exciting research that shows that we can take dyslexic children, children that were previously diagnosed with dyslexia, and change their profile so that they don't now look like they have dyslexia, the symptoms of dyslexia. We can also see that on this side of this language processing spectrum that you can have just plain weak comprehension with no label at all, just have difficulty um, comprehending what you read or difficulty comprehending what you hear, or it can be severe enough that it's hyperlex you can be labeled hyperlexic um, or hyperlexia or autism. Hyperlexia, if you're not familiar, familiar with the term, simply means that uh, it's very easy to think of it. It just means that you can decode better than you can comprehend. So let's take a look at what these, this diagnostic learning evaluation actually looks like, and then I'll be almost done. Uh, what you're hoping to do, or what you will be able to do with the evaluation, is identify a learning profile. 
So this is what the tests look like. I'm just going to show them quickly. I'm not going to go through each one. And once you can, once the student has had the um, what we call learning ability evaluation (LAE), then we can start to find out where the strengths and weaknesses are. What what do they look like in terms of symbol imagery? Um, what do they look like in terms of what's their profile look like in terms of phonological awareness? So I'm going to show you three case studies very quickly. The first one is a young man named Luke, 12 years old, struggled to learn to read words, had been in special education since second grade, many different phonologically based reading programs and years of frustration and self-doubt. Let me show you what his uh, profile looks like. Of course, the, what we're trying to figure out is where is he with phonological awareness? Where is his sensory system in terms of um, sensory cognitive functions? And this is what his um, evaluation looks like. So before we move on to examine all these, you need to know that when you're looking at percentiles, you, they go first percentile to 99th percentile. And the 50th percentile is obviously right in the middle. It's very common to think that 75th percentile to 25th percentile is considered normal range, although some people will put normal range as low as 16th. I, pr I do not um, think that that's okay because I myself would not like my child performing at the 16th percentile and thinking that that was the bottom of normal range. I think that this is as low as we should go, and that's how we think of it. So if you look at the Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test, which is a receptive vocabulary test, and you look at the um, percentile, you can see that Luke's scoring at the 75th percentile, and therefore he should be reading and spelling and comprehending at that level. You look at his word attack test, and his word attack with his ability to sound out words, let's go back here for a second, that's at the 86th percentile. So we know that his phonological awareness and phonological processing has been developed with the years that he has uh, had a phonologically based reading program. But now if you look at his word recognition skills, again, that's this circle here, it is not, if I go back and put it over here, it's at the 37th percentile. So you are now becoming a diagnostician, which was my goal for uh, today, that you can see that he has that one circle well developed enough so that when he's reading on the page, he's going to be able to sound out words that he's not seen before. But he does not have his word recognition skills developed at the same level. Something has happened with his ability to memorize those words. So if we go back and look at his profile, his ability to follow oral directions is high, so therefore his comprehension is likely to be high. That's an oral language comprehension test. Once he could decode. So this test is a paragraph reading test. So now we're looking at this circle, this circle up here. And his reading rate is the 10th percentile. His accuracy is the 25th percentile. And his fluency is the 16th percentile. But his comprehension is the 37th. So indeed, this Luke is a child that if we um, look closely at his profile, he has 75th percentile in oral language, so he should be able to read easily. His uh, ability to sound out words is the 86th percentile, but his ability to read in paragraphs is, let me write in here for us, is the 25th percentile. So do you think he likes to read? No, he does not. He's not doing well. In school, his um, he's not doing well in school in, in this way. He's still very frustrated. Uh, he's been in special ed a long time, yet he has the ability to read to his potential. He's just had one part of his sensory system that has not been developed yet, and that is symbol imagery. It's right here. His phonological awareness is okay. That's what this test is, but his ability to 
uh, hold and access images of letters in his head has not been well developed. Let's move on to another student. Um, this is a seventh grade student. She excelled in reading in the primary grades. Her name is Piper. In fourth grade, she began to experience difficulty answering questions. And so if I put these circles up here, and this is word attack, and this is word rec, and this is paragraph reading, and here's comprehension, you're already beginning to get a clue. If you think of those circles, you're already beginning to get a clue on what might be happening for her. In fifth and sixth grade, her parents were told she wasn't paying attention and she wasn't trying. She now has social issues and tells her parents there's something wrong with her. So let's look at her profile. Her Peabody picture vocabulary test is a 58th percentile, and so how is that? She's just a little bit above the 50th percentile, so it's well within the normal range. Look at her word attack skills. Look at her reading, uh, <clears throat> her word recognition skills. So let's just put them in here. This is the 99th. This is the 99th. Let's just fill this one in. Her reading accuracy, 95th. So why would she be experiencing these problems? If we think of Piper back to kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade, she has had some weakness in comprehension I think that's what we're going to see here. This is following directions. Look at how much lower her ability to follow directions. Uh, look how much lower that is than her word attack and her word recognition skills. But the real shocker for you should be that she's at the 25th percentile in comprehension compared to the 95th percentile in being able to read words. Her phonological awareness and her symbol imagery are all good. So we can now diagnose that we need to work with her her weakness is language comprehension. Let's go to another. Well, let me tell you a little bit more about this. <clears throat> What's happening for her is as the language comes in, it's essentially going in one ear and out the other. And she's getting parts, and what she's having difficulty with is grasping the whole or the concept. And I called that concept imagery. Now, if she's only grasping parts, that means that she's going to remember a few details, a few facts, but what she'll have difficulty with is main idea, um, conclusions, predictions, because all of those, those higher order thinking skills require the ability to uh, grasp the whole. And, and I put this slide in here because I think it's important for you to know that it is much more difficult to diagnose a concept imagery weakness because it's much more difficult to diagnose it than, than it is to diagnose if someone is uh, misreading words because it's hard to tell if they're not trying or if really the language is going in one ear and out the other and the difficulty is based in the sensory system. So look at the long list of things that if you have weakness in concept imagery you might also have weakness in obviously written language and oral language comprehension, which we've already talked about. But you'll also very likely have difficulty in, in critical thinking. Also have difficulty in following directions. That's the child that you give three directions to, or the teacher gives three directions to, and they get grasp one of them, the rest of them are gone. You might also have difficulty expressing language orally, or expressing language in writing, because the thoughts are not clear and concise grasping humor, interpreting social situations, understanding cause and effect because that requires the concept or the whole mental mapping. Um, I've worked with so many students that would say that they were constantly lost and that was because they couldn't create a mental map. And if you have been diagnosed um, on the spectrum, autism spectrum disorder, I think that all of these symptoms make it really difficult to respond to a communicating world. Now, that takes me directly to the last case study, and that's Chip. He's six years old. His prior diagnosis was autism, and he's on the autistic spectrum. He's had a lot of speech therapy, he has a lot of difficulty communicating, and he has had a variety of programs for uh, ASD. So here we go. Let's take a look at Chip. First of all, we see that he does not have strength, massive strength, in oral vocabulary, but it's within the normal range. 
His word attack skills, 75th percentile. His word recognition skills, 58th percentile. What's interesting about this is look how much higher those are than his ability to understand the meaning of words. Now we can really see what's happening with Chip. He's the second percentile in following oral directions, and his comprehension is at the below the first percentile despite the fact that he can read words. Chip, like many of the students that we see that are diagnosed with ASD, has a very significant uh, language comprehension uh, deficit, weak concept imagery. So, we're at the end. And that is this, that this diagnostic learning ability evaluation identifies strengths and weaknesses in learning. And what we want to do is identify those and change if we find them, if, if the student comes in to us and he's maybe struggling in school and he doesn't have any weaknesses, then that's a different issue and you need to know that too. But if there is a weakness or two or more that are identified, we want to change those weaknesses so that they become strengths. And we can do that by directly stimulating the sensory cognitive functions that I've been mentioning. This profile lets you identify, this um, LAE, the evaluation, lets you identify the student's learning profile, and then questions can be answered about school performance and action taken if it's not something that's learning related, and action taken if it is something that's learning related. And it also allows us, or you, and if you're not seeing us, it allows you to make sure that there's focused, differentiated instruction that can be provided on the basis of sensory cognitive needs. So our goal is this, that we help a student through the LAE, we help, help a student become independent, self-correct, monitor, and we do all that through the sensory input of imagery. And here's the end. I believe passionately, I wrote this down in a slide so that you could actually read it. I believe passionately that children and adults can be taught to read and comprehend their potential. Thank you very much.